Hello, I'm Wiesi, and this is a CTF write-up for the question White Snow Black Shadow from the Mipone CTF Qualifier 2018. This question involves binary analysis, hex editing, and knowledge of file structures. As always, the link to the files will be in the description of the video. So here we are on the Mipone website. Here we have the file, or the question, White Snow Black Shadow description. Finally, we caught the image in criminal, criminal communication, but Holmes, why are they crying? So here we have the attachment. It looks like it's just a zip file, so I'll copy the link location and download it with wget. Okay, and here we see we have a large zip file, well, I mean a large name on the zip file at least, and uh, I guess we'll go ahead and unzip it. So it looks like we get evidence.jpg now, and um, something annoying here is that both of these files start with the word evidence, so if you try to use tab completion, it'll, you know, it'll mess up. So I'm going to rename this file right here to uh, just original.zip, just so that I don't have to worry about the tab completion being annoying. Alright, so anyway, here we have this image, evidence.jpg, let's open up the picture. And nothing too special here, it just looks like, I guess it's from an anime, I don't know. This CTF is, uh, is a Vietnamese one, so I don't know if maybe the natives can understand this, but it looks like it's just a regular image. When I see images in CTFs, I generally think two things. First off is bit encoding. Bit encoding is when a specific bit in the color channels of a pixel is manually set to either 1 or 0, so that when they are all concatenated together, they form a message. So for instance, this picture right here looks like a solid red, but actually this pixel is 254 red, and this pixel is 255 red. So when you concatenate the least significant bit of all these numbers, you actually form the letter E. To solve a bit encoding question, you can write a script that can kind of mess around with the bits and play around until you can finally get a message. The second is when there are hidden data within the binary, and to solve these kinds of questions, you can use a binary analysis tool such as binwalk, which will look at a blob of binary data and search for file header signatures to be able to find files that are hidden within the binary. All right, so we'll jump back to our terminal and we're gonna run a bin walk on the evidence.jpg and we'll see something interesting. So here we can see the JPEG image data and the TIFF image data and that's expected because it is an image. But here we see an end of zip archive, uh, which is interesting because there's never says a start of a zip archive, it doesn't say there's an entire zip archive, it just recognizes the end of one. And also you can see that if we try to extract it, it doesn't actually extract anything because there is no full zip archive to extract. So next I tried to use an unzip command to see if possibly it could still find the file in there. And here we get an error message so it says 139098 extra bytes at beginning or within zip file. And I expected that because it looks like the image goes up until that size. And then bad zip file offset, bad zip file offset. Looks like it doesn't actually find any files in there either. However, I do know from, from previous experience that the unzip command does have an option that will list files in it, but it doesn't actually extract them. So I just I was curious and wanted to see if it could actually find any files in there, even if it couldn't extract them. And to my luck, there we see message.pdf. Uh, obviously, we couldn't extract that, but this shows us probably the flag is going to be in there somewhere. So we just have to find out how to get to that file. So I noticed this offset here, and I want to convert that um, into a hex decimal number because I want to look in, look at this file in the hex editor. Any hex editor uses hex decimal, obviously. So I open up Make Calculator. And it tells me right here that this number is equal to 21F5A in base 16. So now I'm going to open up this file in a hex editor. I use the hex editor called Bless. It's just it's within the basic Ubuntu software packages, so I just use it, but you can probably use anything, really. And I use that ampersand so it runs in the background. So here we have it. Um, I'm going to look on the side here for 21, what was it, 21F5A. I don't know if you can just go right to the line. I actually am not very familiar with this, <laughs> but I just I didn't take too long to just come down here and search through it. Where are you at? 1C. Right, 21F2A. So it'll be somewhere roughly around here. And if you notice, we can see in the um, ASCII section that we do have uh, our message.pdf here. And we also have the letter PK here. And PK to me is important because I know there's a certain zip structure called PKZip. So when I see this PK, I think, okay, this is the start of the file. However, Binwalk was not able to recognize the start of this file. So at this point, I decided to look up on the internet what the pkzip file structure is like and why it couldn't find it here. So back to our browser, I searched on the internet for the pkzip file structure, hoping that I could find a good documentation somewhere. 
and I found this. Not formatted very nicely, but it looks like it has what we need. Uh, I want to scroll down a little bit just to look for where it actually shows the bytes. Here we have the local file header. So the local file header signature, which is what we were looking at, says 04034B50. Now, when I go back to, oops, when I go back to the bless editor, I, I see right here is the 504B. Those are the letters for PK. But you notice how it's 50 first and 4B second, but here has an opposite. But that's just because this uses um, a different endian structure. So this will be a little endian while this is big endian. Um, and then the next two should be 03 and 04. So I guess that wasn't it. And when I look at the next one, all the way, come all the way down here, we have 0506. So I actually just went ahead and changed that. So 03, 04. And then I went ahead and saved this as a new file. I kept it as a JPEG. It could be you could you can name it as a zip though if you wanted to. So now we can see our fix.jpg file. And if I run a bin walk on it now, then we can see it has the zip archive data and the end of zip archive. So now I tried to extract it. And there it is. So I open up into the extracted area. And here I have 21F58.zip. I'm guessing that was um the location of where the zip started. And I also have the file message.pdf. So let's open up message in Ocular. But to my surprise, it could not open the file, message.pdf. And uh, I guess that something went wrong with unzipping it, so I went ahead and run strings on it. And some of these look pretty accurate. That looks like roughly what a PDF should have, so I wasn't really sure what happened entirely. So I listed again, and I tried to unzip the 21F5A myself to see if there were any issues with it. And here we get an error, bad CRC. 0E5B440 should be 54. Whatever. At the time, I didn't know what a CRC was, so I looked up on the internet. So here it says, CRC stands for Cyclic Redundancy Check, is a calculation made from all the data and followed to ensure accuracy. So basically, reading this, it seems like a hash of the files inside of the zip, and if the CRC is incorrect, then that means when you unzip the files and then it rehashed it, it wasn't the same as it originally was. So my best guess was that something went wrong with the decompression. So I took a look at the documentation for the file structure of the pkzip right next to my bless hex editor to see if I could find anything fishy. So for four bytes we have the local file header signature. So that takes one, two, three, four. Next we have the version needed to extract, oh, it's like 1400. Uh, next we have the general purpose bit flag, which would be these two right here. And next we have the compression method, 0900. And to me, in my desperation, I just figured I would keep trying to change the compression method and see if it would ever match the CRC. I could have written a script to do it, but I figured there can't be too many compression methods, so I just tried it manually. So I opened up my blessed hex editor right next to my terminal. And uh, one thing I want to note before I run through this is that you don't actually have to run a bin walk every single time. Uh, you can just directly run an unzip right on the file because it'll skip through all the nonsense and get right to it. It needs to unzip. So I just started out changing the 09. Let's go to 00. Once again, bad CRC. So I'll just fast forward through me looping through all of these. You can see some of them even show up as an unknown compression method. Just as I was about ready to give up, I tried one more. And to my luck, it says inflating message.pdf and no error. So it looks like here we have a PDF. Unfortunately, I don't see a flag anywhere in here. So I closed out of Ocular and I used a command that I know from previous experience, which is PDF to text, and it'll look at all the text in a PDF file and just convert it into plain ASCII. And that creates a file called message.txt. So if I go full screen here and I cut out the message.txt, we can see more than we originally saw. First, we see what looks like the format of the flag throughout here. So I simply copied all this together. And that ended up being the full flag. All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you learned something, and feel free to leave feedback. Uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong or right. Thanks, bye.